When you think about a library, what do you think about? Old, outdated books, small, cramped buildings, you gotta be quiet. Well, after this episode, I'm gonna change the way you think about libraries. With more than a decade of selling real estate in and around the Winston-Salem area, one thing that I've learned is we are blessed to be able to call this place home. This show is dedicated to showing off some of the incredible places and great people in this area. This is The Saunders Show. Hey everybody, today I am downtown on 5th Street in Winston-Salem to show you the brand new Central Library. Now, if you've drove down 5th Street in the past year and a half to two years, you've noticed a major renovation project. So today I'm gonna to take you through this massive library and completely change the way you think about libraries. Come on in, let's go inside. So I'm here today with Elizabeth Skinner, who is the Deputy Library Director here at the Forsyth County Library downtown Winston. Thanks for taking the time and meeting with us. Happy to. This place, first off, is phenomenal. <laughs> it's big and very, very nice. Tell us a little bit about the history of the library. Where did it start and how did we get to where we are today? All right, well, we have a long history in the community. We're over 100 years old. The first original library was an Andrew Carnegie Library. He was a great philanthropist for libraries and that was located on Cherry Street. The community quickly outgrew that space, but we did not open a new facility until 1950s when we opened on this current site. And then in, in the 1980s, they built an addition on the back, and that served the community for another 25 years. I've worked for the library system for over 30 years, and everything was pretty new when I first came here, but we just really outgrow our space. So finally, the community passed a $40 million bond in 2010 to build a new central library for $28 million. And so it really is almost a totally new library. Yeah, I was gonna say there's nothing about this. It looks like a basic mm -mm. remodel. Mm -mm. So this is not your typical library from what people grew up with. That's it? true. We got a lot of input from the community and they told us that they wanted a building that was light, open, good sight lines. We needed to improve security and then incorporating new technology so that we could be a 21st century library. Now tell me a little bit about, I saw coming in, you have a section just for kids, mm -hmm. you have a section for teens. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the different, okay. different sections you have there. So the children's department for children is probably the greatest improvement in the entire library. I would say that's a 300% improvement over what we had at the old central library. It's double the square footage. They have High tech for young children, like one of the most popular things is an interactive wall where kids poke their heads through things and measure how tall they are and all of that all the way to high tech computer stuff. Then our teen space is really cool. We have three gaming stations, which they love. We have a green screen and video technology to do filming. Kind of our philosophy is get teens in with something they think is really cool and then, you know, hopefully they'll read a few books along the way. Our crown jewel department is the North Carolina room. It's on the second floor of the library and we have a very extensive local, state and regional history department and genealogy resources. So lots of research. We have people coming from all across the country to do research in the North Carolina room. So you say people come from all over to they research? They do, they come to research and we were talking about small business earlier. Um, we help a lot of small businesses do their research on how to write a business plan. I have noticed a lot of business people um, just coming in and using the library as a kind of a neutral place where they can get their projects done. And that is a great resource for small businesses. Mm -hmm. What's the process for somebody if they want to have a business meeting or meet with clients or something? Uh, we have online on our website a little icon on the right hand side for meeting room reservations and you can just go in and pick your room. It'll tell you what's in the room, how many, how, what the capacity is. Any cost associated with that for the rooms or anything? Or? Well, amazingly no. So the right. library is free and open to everyone. We're supported by um, local, state and federal tax dollars so we do not charge for meeting rooms. Wow. Just coming in seeing the total amount of how many books do you have here? Just we have this. about 220,000 items. Mm -hmm. We weeded our collection so that what they've found is that you want the best stuff. You don't want a lot of old stuff. You just want what people really want in the collection. So our collection might have been a little larger, but it's about 220,000. 
So this just shows some of the things that the library has to offer. We are on the first floor in their audio sound studio. They actually have everything that you need to do podcasts, record your music. They have a keyboard over here in the corner, Apple software, Apple computer to produce it and everything. This completely blew me away. I had no idea they had all these different things to offer and pretty much free of charge. You just have to reserve the room. You might be the next podcast superstar starting at the library. So you can come in here and start up your own podcast. Okay, so you mentioned coming up here, one of the areas that you're really focusing on is the millennials. I mean, obviously a lot of businesses, a lot mm -hmm. of industry and everything talks about the millennial generation. What are y'all doing to reach millennials and actually show them what a library is and what it can be? Well, um, Paul Norby with City County Planning told me a year or so ago that downtown residential was the fastest growing residential area in the county. And I just really wanted the millennials to use the library because I had this sense that they thought it was not cool. And I knew when we opened the Central Library they would be surprised. People just sit at the tables with their laptops and their devices and they either work independently or they collaborate on projects. I think we've succeeded with millennials. So some of the information you said with the history of Winston-Salem and North Carolina mm -hmm. and everything and the pictures and all you've mentioned you've had, it sounds like this is a library slash museum. Is that accurate? Somewhat, especially in the North Carolina room, but also I like to say public library as art gallery. The Haynes family endowed over a million dollars worth of art. And so we have some gallery space. We have an original Andrew Wyeth, if you know anything about art history. We have a British portrait that is worth a lot of money. And we have placed art all over the building. We could have an art tour just of the Central Library. Okay, so library, museum, <laughs> art, art gallery, gallery. <laughs> small business yeah. incubator basically. Right. Um, cafe. cafe. Educational resource for people of all ages. Okay, so what am I missing? <laughs> well, Elizabeth, I want to thank you so much for taking the time meeting with us. You've been a wealth of knowledge and it sounds like you know everything that's going on in and around the library area. So thanks so much for sharing that with us today. Oh, it's our pleasure. We want the public library to be everyone's community gathering space. So please come visit us. Awesome, thanks. So there's the tour of the Central Library, downtown Winston-Salem. Like I said at the very beginning, it's a lot more than a library. You've got a library, art museum, museum, studio gallery, video game room, but I guess that's too hard to fit on a sign. So come check out the Central Library right here in Winston-Salem and see everything that it has to offer. If you're viewing this show on our YouTube channel, click the subscribe button below, or you can visit our website at srealtynow.com. This is Mark Saunders, and I'll see you next time.